I say I think to learn who you want to is a right that no man should have anything to do with. It's a God-given right, I think. In the summer of 1958, on a hot July night, Mildred and Richard Loving slept in their bed in Caroline County, Virginia. Without warning, they were woken by bright lights and shouting voices and ripped out of bed by police officers. The couple was taken to the county jail and charged for something so normal almost every person in America does it, marriage. In a time when segregation and Jim Crow laws were a key part of society, including laws that forbade blacks and whites from doing everyday things together, the Lovings chose to defy the laws and societal norms by pursuing their love. On that night in 1958, Mildred and Richard Loving unintentionally joined the ranks of civil rights activists across the nation and set the wheels in motion for a landmark case that would forever change the definition of marriage in America. Although the Loving v. Virginia decision legalized interracial marriage in the United States, society still struggled to accept the change, leading to the continuation of prejudice against interracial relationships and the discrimination of other groups of people deemed different. During the height of the Jim Crow era, the Virginia Racial Integrity Act was passed to protect white supremacy. It classified racial groups and made interracial marriages illegal. This idea of racial purity was first endorsed by Walter Plecker in his 1924 book, Eugenics in Relation to the New Family and the Law on Racial Integrity. The state of Virginia used Plecker's book as the backbone of evidence for their racial integrity laws, citing intermarriage would have dire effects. It was these very laws that the Caroline County Police Department used to charge the Lovings and send them to jail. In June of 1958, Richard and Mildred Loving were forced to travel to Washington, D.C. because they were unable to get married in Virginia. One month later, on July 11, 1958, the Caroline County deputies burst in the Lovings' home and awoke them from their slumber. With the incriminating act of the Lovings in bed, the deputies took them to the county jail where they were charged with violating Virginia's anti-miscegenation laws, a felony charge. In 1959, Richard and Mildred Loving pled guilty in the Caroline County Circuit Court. Judge Leon Bazile granted them the opportunity to leave the state for 25 years instead of one year in prison. The Lovings took his offer and moved to Washington, D.C. Four years later, inspired by the civil rights movement, Mildred Loving fought back when she reached out to U.S. Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy. He referred her to the National Capital Area branch of the ACLU where two attorneys were assigned to their case. We have three children and cannot afford an attorney. We wrote to the Attorney General. He suggested that we get in touch with you for advice. Please help us if you can. Hope to hear from you real soon. Yours truly, Mr. and Mrs. Richard Loving. And it was that simple letter that got us into this not-so-simple case. Because Judge Bazile had initially sentenced the Lovings, he still had jurisdiction over the case. Bazile would not vacate the conviction, allowing the Lovings to appeal his decision on the basis that Bazile's ruling was racially motivated. His ruling stated, Almighty God created the races white, black, yellow, Malay, and red, and he placed them on separate continents. The fact that he separated the races showed that he did not intend for the races to mix. On March 7, 1966, the Virginia Supreme Court ruled against the Lovings in support of its anti-miscegenation laws. The Lovings then decided to appeal to the United States Supreme Court. Their case was heard on April 10, 1967. The Lovings legal team argued that Virginia's anti-miscegenation laws violated their 14th Amendment right by denying their right of equal protection by declining the chance of potential spouses because of their race. On June 12, 1967, the United States Supreme Court unanimously ruled in favor of the Loving's case, banning Virginia's anti-miscegenation laws forever. In 1967, the same year that the Loving case was decided, only 3% of all newly married couples were interracial. In 2015, 17% of all newlyweds in the United States were married to someone of a different race, only a 14% increase in 48 years. However, the acceptance rate of interracial marriages has gone up from 4% in 1958 to 87% in 2013. It's clear that Loving vs. Virginia made it legal to marry outside of someone's race, but even 48 years later, the interracial marriage rates are drastically low compared to acceptance rates. These statistics show that people today agree that interracial relationships are becoming more common, but that marriage between the races is still not normal and deemed different or wrong. There were no racial issues 
in my home that I was aware of. And un until I brought it home. I went to her house one night and asked her father if we could date. And of course he said he didn't believe in that. My dad said to him, we should mix. And yeah. I was like, yeah. wow. In 2016, researchers asked college students how they felt about interracial marriages. Most of the students said that they had no problem with interracial marriage. But when the researchers showed them pictures of interracial couples and mapped their brain activity, the part of the brain that registers disgust was provoked, showing that even the younger generation sees interracial marriages as abnormal. People were thinking like, oh, this is a phase type thing. Like <laughs> with some of your family members, you could tell it's like, oh, maybe he's just going through this phase of like dating a black girl. And so when we were dating and I think once we got married or talked about getting married, they started showing more um, concern because they're like, oh, this is real. You're actually going to stay with this person. Loving versus Virginia has had an impact on future cases of marriage inequality in the United States. In 2015, Obergefell versus Hodges drew comparison to the Loving case through the LGBTQ plus community. John Arthur and Jim Obergefell, a same-sex couple, wanted to get married in Ohio, but it was illegal at the time, as marriage laws are a reserved power. Like the Lovings, the couple traveled to a state where they could legally marry and then returned home. When Arthur passed away, the state refused to name Obergefell as his surviving spouse, citing that their marriage was not recognized in Ohio. Obergefell decided to sue Ohio for violating his 14th Amendment right, the same right that the Lovings had been denied. His case, like the Lovings, made its way to the United States Supreme Court. The question before the court was, does the 14th Amendment require states to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples? A similar question to the one raised during the Lovings case 48 years prior. The court agreed with Obergefell and in their decision highlighted the impact that Loving v. Virginia had on their decision. The outcome of Obergefell v. Hodges legalized same-sex marriage in all 50 states and again, like the Lovings, changed the landscape of American marriage. Loving v. Virginia and Obergefell v. Hodges both challenged the definition of normal marriage and expanded rights to many. But even with expanded rights, both groups continue to fight for social acceptance. 52 years ago, America's marriage laws were changed for the better, but throughout modern day society, discrimination continues against interracial marriages and couples deemed different. Richard and Mildred Loving made history fighting for their right to be happily married through their Supreme Court decision in 1967. Though the couple's court case changed the laws surrounding interracial marriages, society has not caught up with these laws, with people of both races still looking at interracial relationships as taboo or a phase that has to pass. Race, race isn't the problem, people are the problem, and it specifically, it's what people have been taught, what people have grown up learning. Right now, it's seen as something that's either special, or a novelty, or different, or a curiosity. I feel like we're in an age where a lot of people are talking about, you know, don't see race, race isn't important, no. but the truth is, race is important. It's part of your culture, it's part of who you are. What's important is to see that race isn't the defining feature of a human. It's not the defining feature of someone's personality or their character or anything like that. So I think when we reach that point. In the 1960s, the Lovings faced discrimination with the Virginia legal system. Their decision overturned a state law, but some states, like Alabama, did not change their constitution to reflect the law until 2000. Today, many couples who do not fit society's definition of normal face discrimination. Society still has further to go, but as it continues to push forward, showing representation of all people, the hope for the future is a country where they can find love without judgment. The question remaining is not, is Virginia for lovers? but rather is Virginia for all lovers.